So good morning everybody. It's uh, bright there today, it's nice and bright. Uh, over the last couple of days I've gotten a lot of questions about the bolt system I use and how I do it. So I'm going to go through it on this video. So it's going to be quite a long video, probably up to 20 minutes. So probably can bear with it, okay? So the bolt system we all use it is for, you know, it started with ball boxes. Some people use a single pen and what I would term semi ball is they put a hen in with the cock until she lays eggs and then they float the eggs. Perfect. With my system, uh, you don't need feeder boards for all your hens from a bull box or to, or to float eggs. If you want to float eggs and you have extra feeders, that means you get more boards off the stud cock you want, the cock you want, young boards from, and all the hens you want to pair them with. So, uh, so it just makes it a bit easier to get more young boards out of one cock than anything else. I have bred 50 or 60 young boards off one cock in the space of two months with, I think, eight or nine different hens a couple of years back. Nick's addiction, I've done a couple of videos on him. Uh, a friend of mine has bred 60, so it works, okay? This works, and you don't need feeders for it. So if you're gonna use all your hens, all your hens rear their own eggs with what we call the fo or what I call the foster cock, okay? He's not the father of the eggs, thinks he is, he just has them. So I'm sure you now keep the pigeons that if you lock two pigeons up in a box, we'll just say a widowhood box where the hen is on one side and the cock is on the other and they can't get at each other. She'll still lay eggs, she'll still go down in eight days to ten days, eight and ten days, okay? So yeah, first of all you have to understand the cycle of how the hens lay their eggs. It is an eight day cycle, so from day one, a hen in good condition will lay on day eight or first egg and day ten or second egg. And that's not always the case, some hens are a bit longer, that's about you knowing your boards and what kind of cycle. But in general, for the most part, it is day eight and day ten if the boards are right, or day nine, you know, it can be day eight or nine. So we'll just we'll work with that principle that it's day eight or nine for the first egg, okay? Second thing you need to know is pigeon eggs, are, board eggs in general, but pigeon eggs, as we're talking about pigeons, are fertilised in the hen on day four, five and six after pairing. So when day one comes along and you've mated them up, day four, five and six are important for fertilising the eggs and the rest don't matter. The hen will lay fertilised eggs as long as she's fertilised on those days, okay? So the next thing you have to do is you have to prepare properly and make sure that your pigeons know each other that are going to be made together with the bull, bull cock. So for example, if you have, in my case, I would normally use eight hens, okay? So the eight hens will see the cock and they'll be introduced to them. And how I do that is over the winter time or in the case of Musgrove Wizard, which I was talking about recently, when he came in, I put him in the section with all the hens he was to be prepared to. And as he, I put a nest bowl down, and as I saw each hen in the nest bowl with him canoodling, I took her out. So we got to know all the hens. In your case, we're coming into the winter time now. What you do is you introduce the hens to the cock over the winter. Put her in, put them in a spare section. Put each hen in a turn for three or four days. She won't lay eggs once you remove her after three or four days, it'll be fine. And then they'll know the cock. So when it comes to springtime and bulling them and getting all his young boards, there won't be any issue with the, with him fertilizing the hens. They'll know them and they'll happily go down for him. He'll saddle, pass the sperm, Bob's your uncle, we have fertile eggs. Okay? So let's go through the system. So I'm going to use this system and I'm going to talk you through using eight hands, just so you can overlap it, okay? So, we're going to start with a Sunday morning, just because it's Sunday, everybody's whatever, or, but whatever day you start, it doesn't matter, whatever day you start is day one, I'm going to pick Sunday just so we can count days and we can name days, okay? So day Sunday, today is Sunday and we have eight pigeons. Your bullcock is in the section on his own in preparation. You go in to your hen section and you take your first four hens that you want young boards from with him and you put them in with the first four cocks that they're going to be paired to. So any widowhood box will do. Any box where the hen is locked inside and the cock is on the outside and can't actually saddle her is perfect. You must be able to feed and water the hens in the box. That's important because they're not getting out. People don't want to let their boards out. Or some, some people don't like locking their boards up 
for a few week, for a few days. I have absolutely no problem with it. I don't think it does them any harm. Uh, if you want to, you can give them extra vitamins and supplements, whatever you want in 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 the, in the box if you need to. I tend to give the birds calcium that I get from the chemist for osteoporosis in the water a few days, a few weeks before I'm pairing up. Okay. So day one, hens are in the boxes. Yeah. Excuse me. <coughs> Day one, hens in boxes. Hens go in the boxes day one, they're fed and they're watered in the boxes with what we call the foster cocks. So these cocks are gonna rear these eggs. <laughs> so, hens in, day one, two and three, we do nothing. You just leave the hens there with their cocks. They feed and water in the boxes and they're left. It does no harm. In fact, I don't let any of my boards have their eggs without knowing who the soil is. <laughs> If, for example, I have a pair of stock boards and the hen goes down sooner than I expected or two before I've removed her, I'll remove those eggs as well. I don't want those eggs because any cock could be the father of those eggs. I don't like that. I want to know who is the father of my eggs. Okay? My young ones. So, day one, day two, day three, hens are just sitting there with their cocks. Perfect. Day four. So day four is where a lot changes. Day four is where you take the first hen out and you put her in with the cock. So you take, come out first thing in the morning if you can. In my case, I do about six or seven o'clock in the morning. It's the time I'm up out of bed. I come out, I put a first hand in. If you're standing there for a couple of minutes and you see them actually saddling and treading, remove her straight away and put her back. Give the cock a couple of hours, two or three hours, okay? <laughs> then you do it again. You go to you take the next hand, you bring her out, you put her in, if you see them treading straight away, if you have a few minutes, if you see it happen, you take it straight out. If you don't see it happening and you don't have the time to stay watching them, leave them for an hour. It'll happen. Just leave them for an hour. Come back out after an hour or so, put the hen back in. Again, give them two or three hours break. Okay? And the break is very important. So you come back out two or three hours later, throw the hen in. Same scenario. If you see it, Great, take her straight out, give them two or three hours. If you don't, put her back, leave her there for an hour, come back out, put her back and give them two or three hours. Now the break between hens is very important and it's really important because of this. He has to build up a sperm count again to fertilize the next lot of eggs, okay? So this is a system, it works, you know, he has to build up sperm. If you put a hen straight in and he fertilizes the second hen, the likelihood is that he won't have enough sperm. To fertilize, and if he does fertilize the second hen immediately, when you come to the third or fourth hen, then you're not going to be able to do it because they'll go through the motion, but they just have no sperm left. Okay, so the two or three hours gives them enough time to build up enough sperm to fertilize our eggs. Okay, <coughs> so that's day four. Hens are left overnight with their cocks. Day five comes along, the same process. You use a different hen force, so go with hen two, three, four, and then back to one. Through the same process, first thing in the morning, if you see it happening straight back out if you don't leave the hens in with them back an hour later put them in so really it's about you suiting your time sometimes i use two hens on the bull system because of my time at work or whatever so that optimally four for me is ideal it can be six but i find the more hens you lose use the less fertility you get so the more hens you use in any one cycle the less fertility you get that's my thing i've done it with six i've done it with ten i've done it with I, I, I've tried 12, but the 12 over three days doesn't work for me, four in one day, and I have the system down to a T, whereby one fertilization actually fertilizes both eggs. I actually, I, I, I have the system down, but when I'm giving it to people, it's three days to start, and then we, you can go from there when, once you understand it. Day four is the most important day, or day five, sorry, is the most important day. So. If, I, if you want to make sure you get one day, make sure you get day five. So anyway, we're going through, back to this again. So we go off topic a little, so you have to bear with me. So now we're on day five. Four hens have been in in a different rotation, and we come to day six. Again, the four hens go in with a different rotation. And you put the hens back, and you leave them there. That's it. The hens should lay on day eight or nine. They should. That's normal process, and they should be fair to them. You know, it doesn't always work. It's not 100% foolproof. I normally get about 80%, okay? But the last couple, the last time, I got forty percent. You know, I'm not, I wasn't happy with it, but that's that. You know, that you just have to roll whatever you get. You're still getting more youngsters after one cock you want. 
them from. That's it. So, so that's the purpose of this, and that works. Okay. So on day seven, then so four, five, and six, if you use the hands. Day seven, if you're using the second four hands, give yourself a break. One day off. Don't do that. So on day five of the first four hands, now you've already got to start preparing for the next four. So day five. When you've come out to the loft for your second day of the first four with the bullcocks, you put the second four hands in with their cock and that becomes their day one, okay? And there's a reason for this. When you go through the motions then, their day six becomes your cocks, your, your other hands, day nine, okay? So you're finished with those four hands after going through the bull system motion on their day three, four, five and six. And on their day seven, it's your four slots day nine. Now that if you haven't got, if your hands have laid on time on day eight, great. If they haven't laid by day nine, put them back in with them. Just give them, it just, because their cycle could be a little bit off and it does no harm. They may lay on day nine then that evening, but if they don't and they don't lay till day 10 or 12, they're still gonna get fertile eggs, okay? <laughs> Pigeons can hold sperm for a couple of days. Hens can hold sperm for a couple of days. So if they're fertilized, they can hold sperm for up to 48 hours. I've done the reading, that's what it says. They can hold sperm for up to 48 hours. So if they release their eggs even on day, if they've been fertilized on day six and they release their eggs on day eight, they'll still have fertile eggs, but they won't lay them till day 10. So it's just about understanding the cycle, but in general it works from day one to eight. Okay? So, uh, in preparation for this bowl system, I have a cock here. I just took him out waiting his hen. I'm going to show you everything. So he's down there on the floor. He's hiding. So he's there in preparation for this. I took him out last night. I'm going to show you his hen. I'm just going to go with how I've set everything up. Let's just look here. So here's his hen. You can see I have water and food already set up. I just locked her in there last night for this purpose. Hopefully when I take her out and put her in with him, they're going to stand straight away and we won't have any issues. And you'll get to see it in action. Okay? So I'm just going to put the phone down for a second and I'm going to take her up. Just give me a second. So here she is, I'm going to put her in, she may do a poop as hands I want to do, and then we'll see if this works, okay? So. Here we go. You can see them there. Obviously, see she wants to tread them, so if they come down and tread, great. If they don't, they don't. But she has to come down to them. So she's just showing off a bit at the moment. And he's there calling her down. I thought that would have gone a bit more smoothly, but you guys know the process. They'll go down, she'll saddle, he'll saddle, and then you just you remove the hen. You know, you know what they do. Like, you know, we've all seen it. We all do it. I just th I thought that might have worked. It would have been brilliant for practical reasons. So you just put the hen back when she's been saddled, and that's it. It's very easy. So what I'm going to do with this video is I'm going to put. Uh, a written form of the bolt system up, how I do it. Uh, it really just mentions four hands, it doesn't mention anymore, but it's up to you to adapt it. It's very easy to adapt, you only need an extra section 
uh, you don't need any feeders. If you want, like for example, if you had four, if you had eight pair of boards and you want them on four hens, you just float the first pair of eggs. Give the hens a week to sit, float the first pair of eggs, go through the process again, and let them rear the second round. Um, I tend, I can do it with up to three pair of boards. You know, I would float the, float the eggs twice, and on the third set, I would let the hens rear their eggs. It's just how I do it. I wouldn't abuse the hens. If I've done three sets, I always let them round the tour round. I always give them up to ten days sitting, up to eight, up to a week sitting on their eggs before I float them, and then I give them a week's break. So they get two weeks break before two weeks between laying the egg and go back into the cycle. The week's break brings them back into their own cycle, brings them back to the start. They're not really looking for young eggs. That's just how I do it. You, I think that the the, mo the least I've left them is, is four days. But the more pressure you put on hands to lay eggs in quick succession, one after the other, you can you know we don't want to damage the hands. You want you want these hands to produce for years, so there's no point in abusing them. Okay, so that's pretty much it. Any questions? Any comments? Have no problems? Let me know. Okay, I hope this makes sense. And again, I'm gonna put. Uh, a written form of it up on, uh, under the description of, of, of the video. Okay, talk to you soon, guys.